I made this video a few weeks back about savvy swaps we can make at the grocery store to stay on budget and to save money. And a lot of it boils down to needs versus wants and to where our priorities are, where we wanna save versus where we want to splurge. And this started a conversation between my husband and myself about other areas of our budget, our household budget, and maybe some things that we don't do or don't buy that the average American household does that saves us some money. I made a list, so I thought I would share that with you today. Not so that you can do the exact same things we're doing, but so that it can maybe just start a conversation, give a little bit of encouragement or a little bit of food for thought so that you can think about this in your household and decide if there are places where you'd like to cut back so that you can save for something or redirect those funds to a different area of your budget. We don't do a lot of fancy coffee drinks. And in fact, we spend a lot less on beverages like convenience beverages while we're out and about than we used to. Occasionally, I will treat myself to a Starbucks latte or some other kind of drink like once, maybe twice a month, and I'm always a little bit shocked at how expensive it's gotten. And I will admit that while I was teaching, I was a huge fan of the convenience fountain drinks, whether that was coming from like a gas station or from a fast food restaurant, and of course, I had a pretty bad sonic habit for a while. But the last few years, we've really cut back on those kinds of purchases. I've noticed we have plenty of drink options here at home and we're even buying less of those than we used to. I mentioned that in my previous video when I was talking about the ways that our shopping habits have changed and how we buy less soda. But something we've actually added that has helped us cut back in this area is a Sip Club membership at Panera Bread. And since there are several of those in our area that we drive by, we decided to try it out a few years back when they were introducing it. And we use it enough that it not only pays for itself, it eliminates the need for a lot of those other special beverages from other places. I noticed that recently they upped the monthly membership pricing. However, they have an annual Sip Club membership that's the best deal. So especially if you're already a monthly Sip Club member, you might check that out. And my husband recently discovered on one of his current credit cards that he actually gets a rebate on a Sip Club membership when you sign up for the annual one. So it actually saves us a lot of money to have that and still allows us to have those special beverages without spending an arm and a leg. I do not spend a lot of money or time on home decor, seasonal or otherwise. With the exception of Christmas, I don't put out a lot of extra things around holidays. You know, Halloween decor or Easter decor or 4th of July, it's just not my thing. I learned a long time ago that I just do not have an eye for that. I have YouTube buddies who have a fantastic eye for home decor. I have sisters who really have an eye for it, my mother as well. I guess that gene just skipped me because it's not a thing that I've ever been very good at. And a while ago, I decided to stop being frustrated by it and to simply keep a tidy home because if I can't decorate things really well or tastefully, I feel like a tidy home is always tasteful. So if you were to walk around my house, it's probably pretty sparse compared to a lot of other homes, but it makes the upkeep easier and it means that I don't have to carve out a lot of extra storage space for seasonal decor. And it also means that I'm not spending a lot of extra money trying to update those things all the time or add to my collection. Neither my husband nor I have the need for the latest and greatest technology. You are not going to find us standing in line at the Apple store every time the new iPhone model comes out. In fact, mine is a couple years old. My husband's is even older than that. And even though this is a business expense, I use this to take pictures and video. I use it to watch videos and respond to comments. I use it to make thumbnails, to answer emails. Definitely a business expense but it still works great. We wait until something is no longer working, we can't fix it, or we absolutely need to upgrade it for quality purposes, which was the case with my computer recently. I had a six-year-old MacBook that worked fantastic for me, and finally, we had tried everything that we thought of having it serviced, having a new battery put in it, and it just was no longer allowing me to edit videos or to do the kinds of tasks that I need to do for YouTube in the quality and with the efficiency that I need to for my work. So it was time to get an upgrade at that point. And speaking of phones, our kids don't have them. 
We have a 10, 11, and 14 year old. Even our eighth grader does not have a phone. She does have a device that is able to contact us if necessary, but she's not even allowed to have that <laughs> outside of the house if she's with us or if she's at school. She can't have it at school, she can't have it at church. And that is not just a money thing for us, that is a lifestyle choice. We are trying to protect our kids from the battle with the phones as long as we can. You can call us strict if you want. It's a decision that my husband and I stand pretty firm on, and we're gonna delay that purchase as long as we can, not just for money reasons, but as a personal preference for the quality of life that we're trying to create for our children. And since we're talking about technology, let me just unpack that a little bit more. Do you see this thing behind me? If you are my age or older, you probably recognize that this is a Nintendo NES, the original Nintendo. It's circa like 1985 or something. It's the one I played on as a kid. It's sort of just a fun thing that we get out and we play when we have people over or the holidays are here and it's kind of fun to get to talk with the kids. It's opened up a lot of conversations about what life was like for my husband and I when we were kids and almost always we're playing it together. But besides this thing, and the occasional Wii sports game at our Grammy's house, we don't have any gaming systems. We don't have Xbox, we don't have PlayStation, whatever the Nintendo one is, I think it's a Switch. Um, that's just not a thing that we've gotten into. Believe it or not, our kids really enjoy the stuff that they have. They spend a lot of time outside playing with neighbors, playing with friends, they're in activities. We play board games, we play card games, we try to do fun things as a family, and honestly, we, <laughs> we're we going to delay or avoid purchasing gaming systems for as long as possible. Not only because they're a huge time suck, but man, they get really pricey when you're talking about games and accessories and memberships and all the things that come along with them, am I right? My husband and I decided a few years back that we were going to say no to or at least extremely limit kids travel sports. I don't wanna to get too deep into the youth sports conversation. I'm pretty sure it's a multi-billion dollar industry here in the US. But for our family, we decided that we were gonna be a little more choosy. And we selected sports and activities, of course, that the kids were interested in and that they showed ability in. But that especially while they're at those young ages, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and they're just developing the basic skills, that we have enough opportunity and enough training in our area. We don't really need to travel outside of the state very often or at all in order for them to get the training and the experience they need and to have fun with this activity. We also did our research and we talked with some coaches. We talked with high school coaches. I used to teach at the high school level. We've looked at what the data says about kids and sports. And we decided that our kids don't need to be trained like they're division one athletes when they're 10. <laughs> <laughs> if that is a detriment to their ability to play a sport in high school, then perhaps there's another activity we can do that isn't so exclusive or demanding at such a young age. I said I wasn't gonna get too deep into the kids' sports conversation, so let me tiptoe back out of that and just end by saying I think it's fine to have different expectations than what you think your community or your culture is placing on you. Really talk about it with your family, do some research, and decide what fits in your budget and what's for your family. Speaking of the kids, I am probably going to catch some flack for this one, but we do not spend a lot of money on kids' birthday parties. I sometimes feel like the kids' birthday party trend has gotten just a little bit out of hand. However, I do understand that for some people who are super creative, that's an outlet for that. It's a priority for them and they truly enjoy it. My husband and I decided, however, that we were not going to spend a lot of money on big kids' birthday parties for a lot of reasons. One of them, of course, is the money. And another reason is because we think it creates sort of some unrealistic expectations for the kids, especially when you do these really big, exciting, over-the-top birthday parties that almost creates this need, which in me would create some panic, to try to outdo myself every year. And we have three kids. So we've got a lot of birthday parties, a lot of years of birthday celebrations to get through, and I just think it would not be sustainable for our family over time. But that doesn't mean we don't celebrate. Just because we're not having a big expensive party doesn't mean that we can't make the day special for our kids. We usually keep birthdays a family occasion, sometimes a few very close friends, and often we are celebrating in our own home with a meal that they have selected that's their favorite that I can cook, or maybe even with food from their favorite restaurant, some kind of treat where we can sing happy birthday and of course presents to open and 
fun to be had either with family, with cousins, or with a few friends that are local or that live in our neighborhood. Now that our kids are getting older, we do sometimes let them pick a few friends if they want to do something special like maybe go see a movie or get their nails done, but those expenses pale in comparison to what I hear some people talk about spending on their kids' birthdays. It is just not gonna be a thing we do, save for the really, really special ones, like when they turn 16. Even though my family has decided not to spend as much money in the areas I'm mentioning, we have our splurges as well. So if I've mentioned something already that you're thinking, gosh, I could just never give that up, there's probably something that we're paying money for that you've already decided is not important to you. We splurge on services that are gonna buy back some of our time. So we have a housekeeper who comes and sort of resets our house every couple of weeks cleans the floors and the counters and changes the sheets stuff like that we also have some help with our yard and with our landscaping because when my husband was working 50 60 70 hours a week we decided we didn't want to be out taking care of lots of landscaping and yard needs with the very limited amount of time that we had at home as my business grew and the bookkeeping and the taxes and the finances and keeping all that organized became much more difficult and much more in-depth, we decided it was worth the money to hire a CPA. Another category of splurges involves paying a little bit more for quality. Things like shoes, because we spend a lot of time on our feet or moving around, we wanna make sure that we're wearing shoes that don't cause us any pain and that help us take good care of our bodies. Mobile detailing for my car, somebody comes here and cleans it out because he has tools and instruments that I don't have and he can do a much more thorough job and that can actually help us maintain some of the the value of our car by taking good care of the interior. And speaking of the car, we paid a little extra for our car insurance and our homeowner's insurance with State Farm because they offered some amenities and some concierge style services that have really come in handy. Times when we've had to be relocated from our home while they were fixing flooring from a leak, times when I've been stranded on the side of a road with a flat tire and they've sent assistance for us. So the little bit of extra money we paid for those premiums with State Farm have really been worth it. We will also sometimes splurge on something we feel will benefit our health, mentally, spiritually, or physically, like a good quality mattress to sleep on, a gym membership, or maybe a vitamin regimen like Care Of, they're sponsoring today's video. Care Of is a health and wellness company that offers high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders that they will ship conveniently to your door every month. To get started, you go to their website and you take this little quiz that helps them assess where you're at and where you wanna be, what your personal goals are. And then it will make some suggestions for supplements and vitamins, and you can choose the ones that you want. But instead of sending you separate bottles of everything, they will put everything that you need for a day conveniently right in one little pack. Plus, the little packets are super convenient if you're a person who travels a lot or you're on the go. I tend to take mine around lunchtime, and so I try to keep a few of the packets in my purse just in case I find myself out and about during the time when I would normally take them, or maybe I'm out having lunch somewhere else besides my home. I recently had some testing done, had some blood work done that revealed a few deficiencies. So in addition to the chromium plus apple extract for metabolic health and the rhodiola for stress and focus, I have a multivitamin plus plus iron, two capsules, and I make sure that I take those every day. If you don't think you're quite ready for the subscription packs, Care Of is offering some of their best-selling vitamins in bottles now, but if you do think you're ready to try it and you want 50% off your first subscription order with Care Of, you can scan the QR code right here, or you can visit takecareof.com and enter my code MINDY50, or you can follow the link in the description box below. And again, that's gonna give you 50% off your first Care Of subscription order. Thank you again to Care Of for supporting my channel and sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to it. Among all of the other things that have gone way up in price, I continue to be absolutely floored at how expensive it is to go to the movies these days. As a result, we rarely go to the movies as a family, maybe just once or twice a year. My husband and I might occasionally go to the theater. He's actually not a huge movie fan. I, however, am a big fan of going to the movies. In fact, when I was a kid in junior high and high school, we went almost every weekend, at least between the months of April and October when all the big summer blockbuster movies were coming out, we would go see movies more than once in the theater. And back then, especially if you caught a matinee, it was a fairly cost-effective way to have some entertainment. 
but nowadays, wow, I mean, it has really, really gone up. The concessions have always been expensive. Now they're just a lot. Even the ticket prices, I mean, we're talking $12, 13 $15 <laughs> to see a movie. I just have decided they're coming out of the theater so quickly, I might as well just wait for them to either be something I can rent for a few bucks or that'll appear on one of our streaming services eventually. My husband was helping me brainstorm for this video and he brought up a really good point that I hadn't thought about. And that is that neither he nor I have any expensive hobbies. We live in Oklahoma, we have a lot of friends who fish or hunt. That can get really pricey because of the equipment that's involved, the certifications and the licenses, the training that's involved. We have friends who like camping and even though that can be a really cost-effective vacation, if you're comparing it to something else, it still costs money when you're talking about the gear and talking about the rental spaces and all the other stuff that you have to have to make that possible. Another really popular thing in Oklahoma is boating, to have a boat and to take your boat out on the lake and to do water skiing and wakeboarding. In fact, that's something that we did when I was in high school. And my dad used to say that when you own a boat, your best two days are when you buy the boat and when you sell the boat. <laughs> because it can get very pricey. It can really add up. And for my husband and myself, I don't think this was a conscious choice. It was just something that was really born out of necessity because between our work and our family, and then adding in now what we do with the kids, we feel like we have enough. We have enough on our schedule. We have plenty to entertain. And if we have free time, a lot of times we really wanna spend it, you know, hanging out on the patio, having people over for dinner, um, you know, reading more, maybe catching up on our shows and our movies that we have on streaming services that we've already paid for. So we just don't feel the need, I guess, We've never had the interest in the kinds of hobbies that are gonna cost us a lot of money. This is probably going to be a hot take for some of you, but in our household right now, we don't have pets. I am the daughter of a veterinarian. My dad practiced veterinary medicine for over 50 years. He owned his own practice for 44 of those in small animal veterinary care. And I'm very well acquainted with the amount of time and the amount of money that it takes to care for pets properly. So when my husband and I were getting married, I said, listen, we can have dogs or we can have kids. I don't wanna have both of them at the same time. So the only pets we have right now, if they can even be called pets, we inherited from the previous owners. They're the koi in the koi pond, which only cost us a few containers of food a year. They're pretty self-reliant and the pond upkeep, which we'd be taking care of whether there were fish in there or not. If you are a longtime viewer of my channel, you're probably calling me a liar right now because you know that for a while we had a cat. And if I'm going to make exceptions to this rule, it's going to be for a cat, as in singular, one. And that is because I find cats to be much lower maintenance than dogs. They don't usually require as much care or as many veterinary visits. They don't need to be walked. They mainly take care of themselves. And one weekend while I was away with the children, unbeknownst to me, my husband went and adopted a cat named Ollie. Ollie was adorable, but unfortunately, she kept wanting to get out of the house and she would dart out of the house as soon as somebody would be walking in the door. And one day she got out and did not come back. And since then, we have not adopted any more cats, although my family asks all the time. But I tell them that we have enough to care for. We have three kids and two somewhat frazzled adults and that's enough for now. We do not have Netflix, at least not right now. We do have Disney Plus, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. And this is an example of what I think a lot of families are starting to do, and that is rotating your streaming services. Because let's face it, there are so many of them now that I don't think we could possibly watch everything or even a fraction of what each one of them has to offer at the same time, you know what I'm saying? We instead have decided that we will have a few of them, we will watch the things we like to watch, and when we feel like there isn't anything more that we'd like to see in the time being, we'll trade it out for something else. We'll cancel that membership and start a new one. We have also noticed that some streaming services are starting to be sign-up bonuses or just perks of other memberships or certain credit cards that we hold. In fact, my husband just sent me a list of the ones he could think of off the top 
top of his head that we get based on other memberships or credit cards that we currently have, including three months of Paramount Plus, $6 back on $8 or more up to three times with the AMC Plus add-on, $20 back on an annual subscription, $100 off the first two months of DirecTV, and $25 on MaxStream HBO, and that's just to name a few. So we do take advantage of those things, and if you have other memberships, if you have credit cards, if you have Walmart Plus, that's another one we have that gives us access, I believe, to Paramount Plus, you might check those services and see if um, some of these streaming apps are available. We don't do Disney vacations. We know a lot of families that do, that have been multiple times, that take the time to research it and save for it and plan for it and count down the days until they leave. But when my husband and I crunch the numbers on that experience for our family, we just can't justify it. It's just not a good enough trade-off. The value is not there for the money for us. Part of the reasoning for that is because we often pay for our vacations almost entirely using rewards and points that we have accrued with our credit cards. My husband is very good at this. He keeps fantastic records, does all of the research, and has really educated himself about how to do that well. It is not for everybody. That's not what this channel is about, so I'm not gonna go into it. I'm just saying don't jump into it until you do your research. But because we have been to some incredible places, including all-inclusive resorts, including to the mountains, to tropical destinations, nations. We can get aways for my husband and I and week-long trips for the family. We just can't bring ourselves to drop the kind of dough it would take to have a Disney experience for our kids when we know that they would like just as well going to lots of other places that we can go for a fraction of the cost. When it comes to cars, we try to take the more economical approach. We don't do fancy cars. Take, for example, the vehicle that I drive, which is a minivan. Years ago, when we were growing our family and we wanted a bigger car with more seating and more storage, we looked at minivans and SUVs, and we realized that we were going to pay a lot more for an SUV than for a minivan, even though the minivan is still going to have a lot of the same amenities. It's got the extra seating that we want. One, it's got the storage. We were just paying much less for it than an SUV. So that is why to this day, I still drive a minivan. That vehicle is with my husband right now because he's with the kids. I am sitting in my husband's 12 year old Hyundai Tucson that we purchased, used six years ago with cash. And even though we could justify a new car purchase for my husband, we could save the money. We've decided not to do that because he likes this one. It works great. In fact, it just got a new engine a few years ago because of a recall. And we're going to have some drivers in the family here in the next few years. So we're going to hang on to this one. Per the usual, I want my videos to be helpful in a realistic, kind, and positive way. And sometimes that means very tangible things like recipes and meal plans. And sometimes it's a video like this that's designed just to start a conversation hopefully give some ideas and help you think about places where you can save money and be good stewards of your resources. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.